If you make a brisk sextant using partial mirrors, you're going to see interference patterns. I doubt they'll help you navigate, but in this video I give an explanation. In a three glass sextant, there are two paths through the sextant that give the same angle for many of the virtual images. These are the paths for the highest such image. A ray comes in from the top right and splits into two as it hits the middle glass. Those paths exit the sextant separately parallel to each other and pass through the lens of the eye or camera and are focused back to a point on the retina or camera sensor. In a plain glass sextant, light close to normal to the glass is split roughly 20 parts transmitted to one reflected. With 50-50 partial mirrors, the beam is split into roughly equal intensities. That means transitioning the middle glass has a similar effect on attenuation as reflection. In this case, the red beam is reflected twice, but it also transitions the middle glass three times, and its attenuation is therefore approximately 32-fold. The blue beam is reflected four times, and transitions the middle glass once, and so ends up with a similar attenuation of 32 times. So these different paths end on the retina or camera sensor, with similar intensities. Whereas in the case of the glass sextant, the blue path ends up being around 400 times dimmer than the red one. This similarity in intensities allows interference patterns to be seen. Light is composed of multiple photon wave functions with the wavelength determining the colour of light. White light contains approximately similar numbers of photons of all wavelengths within the visual spectrum, that being from about 400 to 700 nanometers. This system splits each photon wavefront into two at one point and recombines them at another through paths of different lengths. That means you get a variable phase shift between the two paths. When those paths differ in length by a whole number of wavelengths, then the waves interfere constructively. When they differ by a whole number plus half a wavelength, they interfere destructively. The difference in path length in this system varies with angle, so you get alternating bands of constructive and destructive interference. Red light with a wavelength of about 675 nanometers requires a path length difference of a whole number times 675 nanometers to form a constructive peak. Hence, the wider angle between red peaks than blue peaks with a wavelength of 460 nanometers. You can see that here where I have taken the white pattern image above from the sextant and separated it into three colour components. I don't have colour filters, so cheated by doing this digitally, but the effect is the same. Here is a white light interference pattern downloaded from the internet. In the middle of the spectrum you get a white line where the path lengths are equal and there is therefore constructive interference for all wavelengths. As you move away from that point, one path length gets shorter below and the other gets shorter above, leading to sequences of destructive and constructive interference. Moving away from the centre, the colours become increasingly separated until we reach a point where they overlap again and mix so the colours return to white. But unlike that, the sextant spectrum has a black line in the middle. When light is travelling in a material with a low refractive index like a vacuum or air, and is reflected at a surface of a material with a higher refractive index like glass, the reflected ray is phase shifted compared to the incident ray by 180 degrees. Whereas when light is travelling in a high refractive index material, and is reflected from a surface with a low refractive index, then the reflected ray is not phase shifted. With plain glass, light passing through a sheet is reflected at both surfaces. Partial mirrors are silvered on one side only. They reflect more light than plain glass and most of this reflected light comes from the coated surface, whether it's the first or second. That means that the phase shift of the reflected light depends on from which side the light strikes the mirror. If it comes from the coated side, it will be reflected with a 180 degree phase shift, whereas if it comes from the uncoated side, it will pass through the glass and be reflected off the coating without that 150 degree phase shift. So now, looking at this diagram, we can see that the blue and red paths have two reflections from the same glasses and from the same direction, but the blue path has an additional two from the middle glass, one from each side. One of these gives a 180 degree or half wavelength phase shift. 
That means that whichever way round the glasses are, and whether the light is coming from the right or left, the blue path is always phase shifted by 180 degrees compared to the red path. If the path lengths are equal, there will be destructive interference at all wavelengths. This does not change the spacing between the fringes in the interference pattern, but it makes the centre of the spectrum black for all frequencies, whereas without this mirror effect, the centre is white. The whole system for all frequencies is shifted by half a wavelength compared to the non-black line case. There are other examples of interference patterns from the same sextant, such as this one, where the asymmetry of reflections between the two paths does not apply and the resulting interference pattern has a white line at the centre, seen here. There are other cases of reflective destructive interference. It can be seen with soap films much thinner than one wavelength of blue light. In this case, light is reflected from the second surface in phase and from the first surface in antiphase. When the surfaces are close enough together that the phase change travelling through the film is negligible, then destructive interference for all light results. This black line only occurs in the centre of the spectrum when total path lengths are exactly equal. How this results is perhaps not what you'd expect. With a little light trigonometry, these relevant triangles can be solved. It turns out, if we have an idealised sextant like this, where the planes of the reflected surfaces meet along the same line shown here in side elevation, so meet at the same point, the two paths through the sextant shown here as red and blue have the same length, and the point at which they exit the sextant is also the same for all incident angles Z. There is therefore no potential for interference patterns except that the third image below the sun and others lower down with the same property of unequal reflective phase shifts will not appear because there will be complete destructive interference for all angles, assuming a precise 50-50 intensity split. Unless you specifically make a sextant carefully to have that property, the planes of reflection won't meet along the same line because of the thickness of the glass, like this, in which case the path with more reflections is longer and their exit points from the sextant are always different. This graph shows how those differences in path length and exit point vary with incident angle modelled for a sextant with similar dimensions to the one I used to take this photograph through. Even though this graph covers a wide 100 degree range of incident angles, the lines are pretty flat. The path length difference is about 19 microns, so around 35 times the wavelength of light, and only varies between 5 and 100 nanometers per degree in the central area. Way too little to account for the interference pattern. On the other hand, the exit points are separated by around 150 microns, 300 times the wavelength of light. Parallax therefore changes the path lengths by about 2.5 microns, or 5 wavelengths per degree change in Z. These patterns appear and disappear with changes in Z for this reason. If you vary the angle of the sextant, parallax between these two beams means that you can cancel the difference in path lengths within the sextant, in this case at about 7 degrees. When the total path lengths are the same, you get the black line, and with slightly deviant angles away from that, you get this interference pattern. I've tried to make an ideal sextant with the reflective planes meeting together, but this is not easy with my Heath-Robinson system. If you take two partial mirrors glued together at an angle with reflective surfaces arranged like this, then pivot a third mirror with a reflective surface arranged like this around a line above the glued edge, this is what you see. This is a pretty bad video because it's difficult to film, but you'll see that as you approach this point where the three reflective planes intersect along the same line, the interference fringes get wider and wider until the central black line covers not only the third reflection down, but multiple reflections thereafter. I was only able to achieve this fleetingly, and attempts to glue three glasses together in the right orientation failed, because glue contraction on settings spoiled the angle. Nevertheless, this experiment demonstrates the validity of the geometric analysis. At the beginning and the end of this video, it looks as though there are many white bands, but this is an illusion because of the movement and small size of the images. 
Taking a still and magnifying it, we see the expected interference pattern. My next video will be a more practical one on brisk sextants using partial mirrors. It's been deferred because I'm planning to include photographs of the sun through the sextant and in my current northern temperate winter location I haven't been able to do that for some time.